Hey everyone, Ro here. Today we continue our debate to find the one Primarch who was told the truth of the ruinous powers. General spoiler warning to begin as the events we are discussing today are from across the Warhammer 40k universe, so you have been warned. But with that said, let's just jump straight in. So earlier in the week, we began our search to find the one Primarch who was told the truth of the Gods of Chaos from the very beginning. And if you missed part one of our conversation, then definitely go back and check that one out first. Now just to refresh, this revelation came about from the Horus Heresy Siege of Terror novel The Lost and the Damned. And within this novel, there was a conversation between the three loyal Primarchs, Rogaldorn, Sanguinius, Jagatai Khan, and Malkador the Sigilite. Whereupon Malkador revealed to the three brothers that one of their siblings was resistant to the Whispers of Chaos from the very beginning, and that he alone was told the truth of the Ruinous Powers. Now for this conversation, we are going through each of the Primarchs in Legion order, narrowing them down into a potential shortlist of possibilities. And in part one, we covered the first 10 Legions, up to Ferris Manus. So far on my shortlist of possibilities, I have Lion L. Johnson, Lehman Russ, Conrad Kurz, and Ferris Manus himself. As always, the beauty of the law is we all have our own opinions. So whether disagreeing or agreeing, drop your thoughts in the comments as always. There's nothing better than a great debate and conversation. But with all that said, let's just crack on with the rest of the Primarchs. So, Primarch number 11 would have been one of the lost two. But as in our first part, I'm ruling out the lost Primarchs from consideration because I just don't feel we have enough evidence on them either way. So that moves us on to the 12th Legion and the Primarch Angron. Now, if only this was the Angron who was not enslaved upon Nuceria, the man who had his mind eviscerated by the Butcher's Nails. Maybe the empathetic healer he was meant to be could have well been entrusted from the outset. Indeed, someone with that kind of makeup and talent certainly endears you to think he'd be the complete antithesis of Chaos. However, as it was, the Primarch that we know Angron became, his mind enslaved to rage, I just don't see the Emperor much trusting him with anything, let alone the truth of Chaos. Then again, the guy did still trust him with a Legion, but no, in all seriousness, I just don't see any way it could have remotely been Angron. I know him being elevated wasn't exactly his choice, but with the implementation of the Butcher's Nails, Angron truly stopped being the Primarch he was ever supposed to be. Regardless of Lorgar's involvement, you really have to think it was only a matter of time until Korn came calling. Next up, the 13th, we have Rebute Gilliman. Now, Gilliman is a curious one. Immediately offhand, I'd write him off as being much in the same vein as Rogal Dawn. However, if you go back to his first interactions at the outbreak of the heresy, it could very easily be turned or interpreted that he did know of the ruinous powers beforehand. To be perfectly clear here, I do not think that Gilliman did, or at least I don't think that was the original intention. But in going back and rereading those initial moments, 
it is surprisingly pretty easy to use it to say he did know of the ruinous powers. As we know, Gilliman's involvement in the heresy began with his brother Lorgar and the word bearers betraying him at Kalf. And this all takes place within the heresy novel No No Fear. As a panicking Gilliman contacted his brother over the Vox, trying to find out why his ships are firing, Lorgar revealed the truth of the heresy and Horus's betrayal, with a then demon forming out of his hollow appearance upon Gilliman's bridge. After this situation is resolved, including a fairly badass scene of Gilliman knocking Wordbearer heads off in space, Gilliman then has a conversation with his head commanders, essentially them trying to make heads or tail from everything that just happened. Now Gilliman and his men have a bit of an open council here, with Gilliman going over what they know, seeing no need to keep secrets given the circumstances. And he states in front of his men that this creature was a warp entity, with Lorgar and his legion having consorted with the powers of the warp. So while not saying, hey look, there are gods of chaos within the Immaterium, it's also considering this very brief introduction to demons a fairly accurate statement to be making. So given this reaction within minutes of Horus's betrayal being revealed, with nothing actually said of the ruinous powers, I think very surprisingly here, Gilliman has to go on the shortlist. Yes, later within the Unremembered Empire era, Gilliman does struggle somewhat with the fact of demons, but let's remember just what we're actually looking for here. We are not seeking a Primarch made to fight them, merely one who had the ability to resist their whispers from the start, and one who was told the truth of the ruinous powers. So, given that criteria and the reaction of Gilliman at the outbreak of the heresy, to me he has to go on the shortlist. On to the 14th son, Mortarion. Now, if it wasn't for the Death Lord's fall, I'd have him as a real contender. We know his outright hatred and disdain for any powers involving the Warp. You would have thought that he, of all his brothers, would have been one who could have been told the truth from the beginning. However, for me, there's just no way his turn to Horus's side would make any sense had he known of the ruinous powers from the beginning. No, for me, Mortarion just can't be under consideration here. Next we have Magnus the Red. Of all the sons of the Emperor, there was only one who could sail the depths of the Immaterium alongside their father, whose power and knowledge could truly peer into this boundless realm. And that was Magnus. It's kind of crazy to think with all the amount of time that Magnus spent within the Immaterium, with so much of his life spent learning and researching everything about it, that he would not know of the gods that dwelt within. And there are hints that Magnus did see the true depths of the Warp. However, that was really, in truth, more of his own making. Despite the Emperor's warning him of its dangers, it appears Magnus didn't really comprehend just how powerful those dangers may be, even bargaining away his eye in an attempt to save his sons from their mutations. Maybe that in itself is the perfect showcase of why it could never have been Magnus there would have simply been no way he could have resisted seeking those beings out. Whether through a desire to use their knowledge and power against them, or to prove himself the better, 
it undoubtedly would have led Magnus down a darker path. He undoubtedly knew more than his brothers, as the hints and teases throughout have shown us, but I think his history shows enough that it just could not have been him. But, Ro, I hear you cry. Magnus never turned to chaos until the very end. He never betrayed the Emperor in heart until the very end. That absolutely shows his resistance. And yes, absolutely, I hear you on that. But again, as we mentioned at the outset, Malkador stated all Primarchs are resistant to chaos. There was just one trusted from the beginning. A man who bargains away his eye with a being from within the Immaterium. For me, no way that's a guy entrusted with the knowledge of the Chaos Gods. Next we have Horus Lupercal. Can we even really have a conversation about Horus here? I guess maybe considering he spent so long by his father's side, an argument could be made that it should have been Horus. However, we've all seen his corruption firsthand. He was far too easily twisted away from his father's light. Maybe considering Horus was by his father's side from such an early time, he of all his brothers simply never had to endure any of the whispers. There's just no way the ruinous powers could simply reach him. It's an interesting debate in itself. But for now and for me, there is simply no way it was Horus. On to the Horizon, Lorgar Aurelian. Another fairly straightforward one for me here. Anyone who's read Lorgar's Primarch novel knows full well the religious zealotry that he was raised in. Fanaticism which he then turned upon his father the Emperor. I just don't see any way that Lorgar could have been entrusted with the notion of the ruinous powers by his father. And to confirm that, there's a conversation between him and Magnus within the novel Aurelian where Lorgar chastises Magnus for not telling him of the existence of demons beforehand, before revealing he has now seen the truth of chaos himself. So again, for me, there's no way it was Lorgar. Next we have Vulcan. Now, outside of Horus, perhaps the closest son of the Emperor. Vulcan is and was the heart and soul of his brothers. I mean, could anyone here really see Vulcan falling to chaos? Because I just couldn't even comprehend that notion. This guy is just too pure. There is no way any appeal of the Dark Gods is getting through to this guy. Absolutely no way. I unashamedly just absolutely love me some Vulcan. Bro hugs for everyone. The strongest of all the Primarchs, it is undoubted he is a bastion of strength, in physical means and in the mental. Despite his legendary abilities at the Forge, I also think Vulcan is very much in tune with the spiritual. I'm not talking psychic here, more the simple spirit of humanity's nature. So I do think he could be one of the Primarchs who could comprehend it without being drawn to study it. However, and it is an unfortunate however here, in the novel Old Earth, as Vulcan is travelling within the webway to reach Terra, as he prepares to fight his way through the tide of demons, one of his loyal salamanders stands before him, stating not even a god could fight through that. And Vulcan unequivocally reaffirms, there are no gods. A small comment, which could easily be rationalised away, but for me, in the face of the forces of the ruinous powers, 
It's about as good a confirmation that we can have that Vulcan wasn't told previously of their existence. So for me, Vulcan does not make the shortlist. On to the 19th Primarch, Korax. Now Korax is a tricky one. For me, he had a very good relationship with his father, and the Emperor displayed a huge amount of trust in his son, giving him the secrets of the Primarch project. If it was just down to a matter of trust, then Korax would absolutely have been trusted. And considering we know he's since been fighting chaos within the Eye of Terror, for 10,000 years no less, without giving in to their whispers and calls, you could also say he's clearly displayed the ability to have resisted them from the very beginning. I think he's a very good possibility. In their initial meeting within the novel Deliverance Lost, the Emperor does reveal to Korax he was taken from him by creatures of the warp, ones that exist of thought rather than flesh. Considering the Emperor tells him this within the first few minutes of their meeting, it's very easy to see how this conversation could be further elaborated upon once they got back to the throne world. I'll admit I do have doubts in regards to Korax, considering his reaction to the Primarchs being made of the Immaterium, but on the whole I think he absolutely deserves to go on the shortlist. Man, where do you begin with Alpharius? The 20th found son late in the heresy, I think it's hard to see him being entrusted with the knowledge of chaos. However, spoiler warning for his Primarch novel Head of the Hydra, possibly the secretly found first son, upon the throne world itself no less, well, that son I could easily see being told the truth of chaos. And if it were that simple, I'd probably put Alpharius down as the firm favourite. However, the big problem I have with that is his reasons for betraying the Emperor. Personally, I've always just felt Alpharius turned away too easily. Yes, he's working towards a true victory for humanity, but a few words from a Zeno and bam, you turn against your father. For me, there's just no way that that can be a Primarch who was trusted with the darkest truths by their father. I just think it would have endeared a little more loyalty than that. It would have been brilliant if it had been him. You could tie it in brilliantly to the Emperor working with the Alpha Legion in the current 40k era. And go read the novel Shroud of Night if you don't get that reference. However, for me, with his betrayal, even if it wasn't strictly to favour the Gods of Chaos, I just can't buy it. So, for me, Alpharius does not make the shortlist. Now, an amazing twist would be if maybe it was his secret twin, but that's a rabbit hole we're just not going to go down today. So, all in all, who are the contenders we have come down to? Well, we have Lion L. Johnson, Lehman Russ, Conrad Kurz, Ferris Manus, Rebute Gilliman, and Corvus Corax. Each of these Primarchs to me could have been the one entrusted from the outset, the one who knew the realities of chaos and the ruinous powers. But we now need to narrow it down to just one. So let's let the hard choices begin. I'm going to begin with Gilliman. While his reaction in No No Fear could be used as a foundation, showing he had previous knowledge of the Ruinous Powers, if Rogal Dawn is ruled out for his mastery of the material realm, that he wasn't made to be able to understand the Immaterium, well then I really don't see how Gilliman can't be under the same light. These two Primarchs are too similar in nature for me. Gilliman belongs to the physical. 
He's theoretical and practical. He's going to be the first I remove from the list. And next up, I'm going to eliminate Conrad. Honestly, the only reason I'm doing so is because he ultimately betrayed their father. And I just feel a Primarch who was alone entrusted with the truth would ultimately not do so so easily. His gift of foresight, his desire for justice, it really could have all worked out pretty well. But he turned traitor. And so he's out. Now it begins to get really tough here. But I'm going to take out Korax next. I absolutely think he was one of the Emperor's most trusted sons. However, given his real negative reaction to the secrets of his own creation, I just don't feel like everything would have been such a major shock to him if he already knew of the ruinous powers. So the Raven Lord is out. Next, I'm going to remove Ferris Manus. Now, this is really hard. And I think maybe that's because I'd actually quite like it to be him. Again, as I said in part one, he does have a lot going for him. His homeworld is the closest to the Eye of Terror, his undeniable loyalty to the Emperor, and the Emperor's apparent fondness for him. His sheer rage when Fulgrim tries to get him to betray their father. It really could be Ferris so easily. He really appeared to be completely uncorruptible. But ultimately, I just think it's more likely going to be someone else. But I really do hope it turns out to be Ferris. It would be some great development for his character. But with the Gorgon out, that leaves us with Russ and Lion L. Johnson. Before we end up, I'm going to give that honourable mention to Jagatai Khan. I think his nature, his spirit, and his passion against the Imperial truth, for me, all would have made perfect sense for it to be him. But as we know, he denied it was him, and I just don't take Jagatai as a liar. As for Russ and the Lion, I think Russ is the more suited. Given the implicit trust the Emperor has shown in him, his role as executioner, the references to him having exceptions his brothers did not get, it would make all the sense in the world for me for it to have been Russ. And I don't really want to write him out here. However, as I mentioned in part one when putting him on the list, there is the comment he made in Wolfsbane that the Emperor should have told us. Which really feels like Russ didn't know. And so, that leaves us with Lion L. Johnson. Now, the Lion has never displayed any real notion or evidence of knowing the truth of the Ruinous Powers all along. However, there's one key reason I am saying the Lion over any of his brothers here. And the key to that is in the Malkador initial revelation. He mentions that there was one Primarch who was resistant to the whispers of the gods from the beginning. And this obviously implies that they were receiving whispers. Well, we know the Lion has been approached before. In the short story The Lion, during his interaction with the demon Kairos Fateweaver, the Lion realises that he has heard his voice before. And Kairos then confirms, Yes, I have come to you before. So this shows us that the Lion has rejected offerings before. It's quite interesting too as he tries to use his mind to form a mental shield against the demon's words. And I've always kind of felt that this is the lion's own unique psychic power. The ability to really shield and control his own mind from enemy psychers and powers. As we've seen him display this trait several times. 
So, all in all, with this revelation from the Fate Weaver, Caliban's proximity to the Eye of Terror, the lion successfully growing alone, fighting off chaos corrupted beasts, I think the lion has the most going for him to be the one son who was blessed with the truth from the very beginning. Of course, we may never get to know for certain. It could well turn out to be another Primarch entirely. But my best guess with what we know, the Emperor entrusted Lion L. Johnson with the truth of the ruinous powers. Do you agree with this conclusion? Or are you leaning towards another of the brothers? Like me, would you maybe prefer it to be another one instead? Or do you think that it fits the lion entirely? As always, leave your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too? But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.